Our next guest is a three-time world champion in two different weight classes. He cast a shadow over the super welterweight and middleweight divisions through the 80s and 90s and was revered for his devastating punching power. He's joined by his son and also former professional fighter who is now making a name for himself in another field. Both have demonstrated a recipe for success. Welcome Julian the Hawk and his son, Julius the Chef Jackson. Welcome to Title Unboxed. With more than 40 years of experience in the fight game, our host, Doug Ward, will be covering every corner of the ring as we get comfortable between the ropes. We'll talk with both the lesser knowns and the legends, discuss boxing's rich history and current state of the game. We'll also look at today's latest innovations, equipment breakdowns, and insights you won't uncover anywhere else. Join us now as we take a look inside Title Unboxed. Welcome and thank you, Champs, for joining us on Title Unboxed. Yeah, man, it's awesome to be here. It's always a, a privilege, man. Great. Uh, how are things in the islands? You guys, um, I know if it's probably been a while for us, but more recent for you as far as dealing with the, the results of the hurricane and the aftermath of that. What was that like? It was, was that 2017 and it yeah, was Irma? Yeah. Yeah. Irma. yeah, Irma and Maria. And Maria. So how did that affect you guys at that time and the boxing gym? I know you had a boxing gym then. I don't, don't know if you still do or what were the ramifications of all that, the impact? Wow, uh, amazing that you would ask that. Um, you know, uh, we thought that the gym would have been completely destroyed. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, after the storm, there's a calm. And, uh, you know, during the calm, we went to check. And amazing, I mean, to me, uh, all we had was a uh, uh, water, you know, a lot of water. Yeah. Wow! And uh, we were so grateful that uh, you know the gym, the gym was able to survive. You know, the the the, the category five, you know, yeah. two, yeah. two. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, you know, I think that's it. It says a lot about you know boxing, and uh, we believe that boxing is going to stay. You know, in right. in, in, in the Virgin Islands, uh, yeah. no hurricane will be able to blow us away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. So you guys have stayed up and running and it didn't impact you from a gym standpoint. What about just the ram just the aftermath? Are you guys still seeing some of that still getting cleaned up and fixed or are you kind of through it? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's still a lot of homes that, that need repairing, a lot of roofs still being repaired. Um, but we're almost there. Um, there's still a lot of the major hotels too. Um, got right. a lot of damage. Yeah. They're still not opened as yet. Um, and so it, it's still, we're still recovering from that. Yeah. Uh, we're maybe, I would say, about 75 to 80% there. Right. Uh, so it, it's getting there. But then with COVID, that kind of added another <laughs> setback. <Right. laughs> another setback, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. you're punching through it. You're you're surviving and, and doing well, it looks like. Yeah, man, we're going. We're going. You know, we, we you, you went to some of the tournaments that we've been to recently. Uh, oh. Sugar Burn and all Sugar that. Right. We still got guys training and, and doing that. And, you know, uh, Dion, he just turned pro. So... Uh, you know, we're still trucking and, and getting things going. Yeah, as a, as a matter of fact, uh, right after the, uh, the, the storms, the hurricanes, when we were able to at least uh, clean up the gym a little bit, you know, and make sure everybody was okay at home, uh, straighten out the homes, uh, you know, we went back right into the gym, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, uh, kids were coming uh, to train and uh, they're talking about the experiences that they experienced. Uh, right. You know, in their homes, it, it was just uh, amazing to hear kids on the, you know, from the kids' point of view. Yeah. You know, yeah. and what took place. You know, uh, it was just amazing. Well, you got you got to think that kids that are in the gym, uh, you know, gaining that perseverance, that determination, it's just another roadblock for them. They're they're used to fighting through those things. Right, right, right. Yeah. And uh, you know, and like I, like, you know, I always tell them, you know, if you want to, really, if you want to make it in uh, anything. You know, you got to put your best foot forward. You got to, you know, give your all, give your best. You know, you got to take a chance. You know what I'm saying? If you don't take a chance in life, right, it's not worth it. It's not worth yeah. it. You know, you just have to take a chance. Totally true. You took yeah. a lot of chances in your career. Most oh, yeah, of them paid it, Most of them paid <laughs> off. Yeah, just living here in the Virgin Islands and, and, and training and fighting here in the Virgin Islands. You know, I took a chance, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it wasn't something that, uh, you know, a, 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 a lot of people thought uh, 
you know, that I would make it, awesome. you know, right. they didn't believe it would be possible for me to make it. Right. You know, they wanted me to go home, go to the mainland, man. You know, there's nothing here. And I said, no, you know, they brought me this far. You know, the guy that been training me, Willie Wilhelm George, and uh, he has the talent, man. He has the mindset. And uh, I put my trust and faith in him. And man, you know, the rest is history. We know we made. For sure. um, I think a lot of the doctors believe, you know what I'm saying? That, hey, you can make it. Yeah. it, it does, it's just a matter of your, your mindset. It's just a matter of your attitude and, uh, you know, your determination. Well, you, you beat the odds in a lot of fights. You, you started, you made your pro debut in 1981, right? Right. And a lot of your early fights were, were actually not in the Virgin Islands. You fought in Puerto Rico. Why was that? What was the dynamics of that? Well, um, uh, the Virgin Islands uh, really don't have much uh, boxing. There was only one gym. Mm -hmm. And up to now, there's, you know, still about one gym here in St. Thomas uh, in the Virgin Islands. Uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few uh, people trying to do something in uh, St. Croix. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we try to uh, help them out. But um, it's, it's amazing, um, you know, coming from the Virgin Islands, uh, going to Puerto Rico was an asset to us because uh, it's our neighbor. We, we are only 40 minutes by plane. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was easy to jump in a plane, go over there and get fights. You know what I'm saying? And get yeah. the experience. And uh, uh, a lot of the Puerto Ricans, uh, I mean, uh, amazing uh, uh, athletes. And uh, we learn, you know, from them and the experience that we, you know, carry with, you know, with us, you know, and match it with them, you know, was, was a tremendous um, opportunity for us. And, and it really sort of like was a gauge, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, as far as going into, you know, the, 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 elites, the elites, yeah, you know, going into the elites. So uh, it paid off for us. Well, they, they have a rich history of producing champions and oh, man, probably got man. great work there. Yes, a lot of good work there in Puerto Rico. And uh, we, are, we really appreciate uh, the people that, uh, you know, helped us and um, gave themselves to, 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 and they saw talent. As a matter of fact, um, yeah. you know, talent invites talent. And um, yeah. I think they saw talent and they, they said, OK, we could use what you have, too. <laughs> right, right. Well, and you got yeah. to 20, 29 to 0 on your record. And then you met Mike McCallum for the, yeah. the world title. What did you you lost that fight. You had him hurt on several occasions. Couldn't right. just couldn't just shut. You close, couldn't uh, uh, close the show, so to speak. Right. But uh, an amazing fight. What do you remember from that fight? And what did you take away from that that made you a better fighter? Wow, uh, I'm so glad you you, you mentioned that. Uh, the fight with Mike McCollum. That was my first uh, championship fight. Uh, stepping up in class. Yeah, you know. Um, Mike McCollum, a tremendous athlete, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, very um, talented. His corner, um, I, I, I was amazing corner too, you know what I'm saying? And these guys were uh, very talented, you know, in his corner as well. Um, I think it was not Lou Bella, but um, I forgot his name. Um, they call him the Bulldog. I can't remember his, his full name, but um, he was uh, a, a very uh, fierce Corner it, man. Lou Duva. Lou Duva. Lou Duva? Yeah. Yes. The Bulldog yeah. Duva. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I always admired him, you know. And um, my coaches, you know, as well, uh, would tell me, be careful with him because, you know, uh, there's a lot of tricks. You know, yeah. he knows yeah. a lot of tricks. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I have to be very careful. I'm going to call you back. I have to be very careful. And, um, you know, Mike McCollum, uh, was a very talented boxer. You know, they call him the, the body snatcher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he caught me with some good body punches. Yeah. You know, uh, and some was low. <laughs> I must say the low ones that really hurt me a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That really affected me. I was tummed in that, in that fight as well, in my eye. Yeah. And um, the referee stopped that fight. And i tell you what, um, you know, a lot of people feel that losing is the baddest thing in the world, you know. But I'm tell you what, Losing is what made me the man that I am today. That fight with Mike McCollum was the fight that made me. Instead of uh, uh, defeating me, instead of breaking me, yeah. you know, instead of uh, 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 literally, you know, destroying my, 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 my desire to want to uh, 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 make it, 
as a matter of fact, it actually worked in the opposite way. It made right. me want to go more. It made me want to, I, I got more hungry and it changed my life. Uh, uh, spiritually, first yeah. of all, spiritually, that fight changed my life. I, I, I became a Christian. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, 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 a lot of things, dramatic things happen. Things that a lot of people, I believe, may have experienced and um, are afraid to, to talk about it. But I'm not. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. uh, I went through an a area there in my life after that fight where three witch doctors and uh, a lot of people may want to well, say, well, <laughs> What's that? Three witch doctors? Um, well, these were men that I, I call it science. They're involved in science. They're involved in the, in the dark side. Okay? And uh, they wanted me to come to them for help. And I refused to do that because I, I, I always said, my mother told me this, my mother taught me this, that if you go and play with the devil, he plays for keep and he wants blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I decided not that. to. Not to. And um, next thing you know, I got a next opportunity to fight for the world title again. Uh, Mike McCollum gave up his um, his belt, and uh, because of that fight, or you know, the, you know, a little controversial, Dan King pulled some strings, and I was able to get um, the fight with with uh, In Chubek from yep. Korea. Yep. Um, a year after, and um, I mean, the rest is history. And um, I believe my life, you know, uh, was changed. Um, I mean, supernaturally, God yeah. came into my life supernaturally and changed my life. And I became the junior middleweight champion, uh, uh, championship of the world or the champion of the world. Yeah. Uh, never before fighting out of the Virgin Islands, Yeah. living in the Virgin Islands, training in the Virgin Islands. I became the junior middleweight champion of the world and that was history yeah that you know was a dream come true dream dream come yeah. true I, I i met somebody who was you see i was a nobody and i met christ who is somebody that made me somebody you awesome. know that's the way i put it you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, well, not, I'm not afraid to to tell you. it wasn't something popular it was not popular you know to be a christian sure you know what i'm saying back then and even now so yeah. you know but yet I give God the glory because I know what I've been through. I know the walk that I was walking. I know where I was headed. And if I did, if something did not happen to me uh, uh, supernaturally, I don't think I would have been, I would have been able to uh, capture that, that championship belt. Right. When Ju Julius came into the picture right about then, he was born yeah. while you were training for that fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> He don't remember, but I remember. Yeah. <laughs> you remember being bored right before the fight? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know the story, but I, again, I was so, um, you know, concent you know, I was concentrating so camp. much on my camp. And I was away in camp, you know. Um, yeah. I couldn't really focus on them. Um, what mostly they used to be to me was uh, my anchor, you know. Whenever they come around, they would, uh, there would be such a, 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 a peace, a joy, um, a strength, you know, they, yeah. they gave me that extra drive, that extra strength whenever they were around, you know, because I know I have to work hard. I have to push hard, you know, to support my, 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 my family. Yeah. So, so you won, you win the title from Chubek. Um, then was your first defense against Terry Norris? Uh, no. Um, my first defense was not against Terry Norris. He came um, a couple of fights after that? I don't that? know if I can... Remember, who was my first um, um, defense? Uh, well, but, um, we're in the same boat then. I can't remember what your first defense. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I do yeah. remember the Terry Norris I, fight because that is that I remember is the Terry Norris fight, yes. It was early too, <laughs> you know. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, stuff happening back then because Terry Norris was a uh, up and coming fighter. Was, yeah, that was an and, upset. Um, he was well known in, in, uh, in, in, you know, in his weight division and, very fast and very slick, skillful. Yeah, you know, got good moves, good speed. And, um, you know, uh, we are given the opportunity to fight him, you yeah. know. And um, uh, I, I look forward uh, to it. You know, I, um, I was not afraid at all 
As a matter of fact, I wanted to fight Mugabe. I wanted to fight um, Sugar Ray Leonard. I wanted to fight uh, the best. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, I felt that I had the ability, I had the power, I had the, you know, uh, uh, the, the boxing skill as well, you know, to match against any other style. And um, I, I was not afraid to go up against uh, Mike McCollum or even Terry Norris. And then uh, Terry Norris came into the picture. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it was a deal. Uh, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard would have fought the winner of that fight. Oh, really? Between me and Terry Norris. Yeah, he actually came to the press conference. He, it was actually something that was, uh, I, I can't say it was on paper, but it was something that it was in uh, the, works. the media knew about it. Everybody mm -hmm. knew about it. Mike Corner, everybody knew about it. And um, we were thinking about it. And uh, But, you know, uh, I had to take care of, uh, of the, you know, the first hurdle that was before me, and that was Terry right. Norris. And um, well, he was being touted at the time as the next Ray Leonard. I mean, he really like he's got oh, all the yeah, moves, yeah, he's yeah, got yeah, the talent, yeah, yeah. and he moved on you for the first half of that fight. Man, he was man, he was quick. Yeah, <laughs> Woo, so, he was what, quick and uh, good speed. But uh, my corner, my corner was uh, was uh, instructed me. Our plan was to keep the pressure on him. Uh, if you're gonna fight a guy that is quick, that is fast, you know. Um, you want to be able to, you know, keep, you know, cutting off the ring, keep close to him, and uh, so that you can get your punches off. Right. Um, you know, um, my my thing was the power. My thing was, uh, you know, I, I still had a, a nice little speed myself. Yeah. You know, and um, I, I think that they took that for granted. I, uh, um, they didn't expect I would have been that quick. And um, he made a mistake up against the rope. He and, let himself um, get caught against the ropes. Yeah. And he got caught. He got caught with one punch, the left hook. I didn't have to hit him the other right hand, but um, it was there, and I, I, I caught him the right hand as well, going down. But uh, after I, that, I think you know, he was out with the first right hand. He probably would have just dropped it. Got him. But that out. right left right combination is Abel, it's Abel, a classic for the trainer. highlight reels. Yeah, Abel, who was his trainer, said to me because we used to work with Abel. You know, up at Big Bear when we uh, when Julius was training with um, yeah, triple with Triple G, G. Triple G spar mate. Uh -huh. He was About triple years, yeah. Obviously. He was Triple G spar uh, spar mate. Chief spar mate, doesn't matter fact. Uh -huh. And um, uh, Abel said, Julian, man, you didn't need to hit Terry Norris again. <laughs> 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 you didn't need to touch him again. <laughs> All you had to do was just tell him to wear the fall. <laughs> and um, but you're just you know making, making sure. There's nothing wrong with making sure, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that thing, that, man, I think my ability, I was born with that. But um, my trainer, Willie, helped me to improve on it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there's a lot of fighters out there, you know, that are very good, but uh, they're looking for the power, but somehow can't seem to get it. Uh, you have quite a few in between that can really sting and can really hit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I really believe that sometimes I was born with this. Uh, I remember my, my trainer really telling me, he said, look, you don't have to uh, force your punch. All you got to do is throw it. You're going to hit hard. Your hands are heavy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a topic of conversation a lot. And you're, you, you think fighter or punchers are born and not developed. Right. Um, or is it a combination? Yeah. Well, the special ones. Right? There, are special one of, there are special ones out there. And um, if you, you know, if you use your body, the mechanics right, you yeah. know, uh, you can deliver your punches even much harder. Um, you know, I had a heavy hand as an amateur, but I wasn't knocking guys out like that until, right. you know, until I start to understand, you know, the science behind of it, the, um, you know, using your shoulders, using your elbows, using your hip, using your knees, and everything become one unit. Yeah. You know, my trainer yeah, yeah. taught me that. And um, I practiced it and I practiced it and it became, you know, a part of me. Yeah. Every punch that I threw, every punch that I threw uh, had intention in it. Not because I, I, um, I had it in my mind. Uh, it's just because, uh, you, know, that's, you know, that was the skill. That was the repetition. The, the repetition. That was mm -hmm. what I was taught. So he really just worked with you on connecting the dots. You had the power. Yes. You, got, you, you got big hands too, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, I yes, think yes. that played that plays a role in that it. It definitely part, does. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew guys with some bigger hands than mine. Yeah, but they couldn't hit as hard. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it, it don't have nothing to do with the hands. But yes, I have big hands. But um, I have a lot to do with your technique. It have a yeah. lot to do. Delivery. 
you know, with, with that, that I, I believe that aspect of it, the well, way you throw your punches, and, and what you use. And Julia's got a little bit of that. Yes, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he can develop it too, and he can, yeah. you know, we can develop it even more and more. Yeah, you know, nice to he, have that. He has, a, he has a, a, some good power too. Yeah. Now you mentioned Don King. He played a role in your career. What were the what were the positive and negatives of that that relationship, that promotional deal? Yeah, Don King. Uh, I must say, Don King did a lot for me. You know, um, I, I can't I can't totally say that he was, um, uh, 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 you know, a, a person that uh, you know totally took advantage of me. You know, I made more money with Don King than anybody else. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there were some people in my earlier career wanted, you know, to work with me from Miami. And um, I was glad I didn't. And yeah. um, then Dan King came into the play. Um, somebody from New York had some type of, uh, you know, connection. And uh, we was able to talk to them. And then, boom, I was able to meet Dan King. Uh, I, 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 as a matter of fact, I was really in uh, almost like uh, amazed. You know, Dan King was uh, one of the, you know, great promoters back then. He yeah. was uh, somebody to, you know, everybody wanted to be a part of it. Everybody wanted to, you know, uh, be managed by him. And uh, I got the opportunity and um, it started off real good. Um, and, I, you know, I did tremendous. But uh, as time went by, I realized that, hey, you know, I realized that uh, I was more, worth more than I was being paid. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sure. uh, the rest is history. And uh, I fought yeah. for what I think I was. Um, you know, uh, I did. I was, you know, in, entitled to. But uh, uh, you know, it just it, it was hard then. Um, I, I was asking for a million dollar payday, and um, you know, I, I never had the opportunity. Uh, it came very close. Yeah. When I yeah. fought, when I, I signed a contract to fight. Um, uh, I think his name is... Uh, was it James Tony? James Tony. James Tony, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that would have been a, a good uh, one. I signed a contract. I put my name on it. It was uh, 850000 you know. Wow. Uh, the closest I'd ever been to a, a, a big pay, a million dollar payday. And... Um, Which was great you know, money for that time period. Turned, the, um, right. turned it over to, to him to sign. And the, uh, uh, the phone rang... Um, and guess who was on the uh, other side of the table? Bob Aaron. Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, he answered the phone, and then a couple minutes afterwards, he says, guys, I think it's, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, you know, his, his manager, his, his people called and said, they signed the contract, they're going to sue everything that he, that he owns, even his drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Those can't even be worth a whole lot. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, it was it was really uh, heartbreaking for me. But uh, Dan King said he would try and find somebody to replace him and keep the payday and um, and keep the uh, purse. Mm -hmm. And um, that person was um, uh, what's his name? Michael, not Michael Nunn, but um, He's quick, man. Um, he's an announcer now. Uh, yes, um, I can't bring his name. Why I can't bring his name? I'm trying to think. Um, he's quick, man. His father, Roy. Roy Jones. Oh, Roy Jones. Okay. Okay. Roy Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Roy Jones was the pick, and uh, I, I was sure that we was going to have that fight. Yeah. And uh, next thing you know, uh, Don spoke to his dad. And his dad asks, who is Roy Jones going to fight? We will definitely take this fight. Who is Roy Jones fighting? And when Don King says, Julian the Hawk Jackson, his dad says, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> his dad practically said, no way. Yeah. You know, but, um, man, that's the way the game is, you know. And uh, yeah. I lost that opportunity and end up fighting a lesser opponent for, you know, a lesser you know, uh, pay, pay day. Well, but other than that, and, you know, and it wasn't that less. It was, uh, it was half of that 400, yeah. 400,000. And, um, um, 
Well, the the Ray Leonard fight would have been a million dollar fight. Why do you think oh, that yeah, didn't well, happen? Definitely, that that definitely that would have taken me to the top. But you what know, Ray with Leonard that? decided that he's going to fight the loser rather than fight the winner, uh, and uh, still lost the fight. Yeah. You no, know, you know, just the other day we were you know having fun, and I was talking about fighting Sugar Ray Leonard. Come on, if 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 um, Mike Tyson could come back and do a little show, let's do it, man. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let's do it, and. Um, but, uh, you know, I understand that, you know, it's, it's people say that you may not be, you know, yeah. Yeah. mental, mental state, state and that to, to get into something so, like that. So, Julius, you would have been about, what, uh, nine years old at this point around the Terry, uh, Terry Norris fight? Yeah, yeah. Okay? About. So what are your earliest recollections of your dad as a, a celebrity in the Virgin Islands? Which he was an icon there for sure. And yeah. just boxing in general, what was you, what are your earliest memories of that? Um, yeah, a lot of it. Uh, we we knew he was uh, something of a big deal. You know, we yeah. knew that was yeah. something going on. I remember one time we went to a a, a Mike Tyson fight. Uh, we were able to go in like ringside and all that yeah. um, because you know they were promoted by the same people. Yeah. Um, and I remember we got there. And then the fight was happening, and then it was over. And then my mom was like, yeah, it's time to go. We were like, wait, what? Yeah, already? <laughs> but it was Mike Tyson, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so All of his fights were like that. Yeah. Right, right. It's, wait, it's over? So, yeah, so we knew we knew that uh, he was a part of something that was, was big. Yeah. Um, but uh, we didn't really know it for sure, especially me at that age. I didn't really know for sure exactly what we yeah. were doing. Um, we lived in Vegas for a couple years as well. Um, and we kind of saw different things. We'd go to the gym sometimes. Um, some of the guys would come to the house, the promoters and stuff sometimes would come to the house, things like that. We, I remember hanging out with Mike McCollum and his yeah. kids and all that. Yeah. You know, so we, we, we knew um, a lot of what was happening, uh, but just didn't understand it. Uh, as I got older and then as he uh, um, was starting to re get closer to retirement, um, yeah. that, I really remember those because those were traumatizing. Uh, he, had yeah. lost a, he had lost a fight, and uh, <laughs> we were what? watching the fight. Yeah. And then I, I punched a I punched a hole in the door, <laughs> and my mom couldn't believe it because I was really the, the really relaxed kid. You know, my mom couldn't believe it, so she like called him like, it's, "Your son punched a hole in the door." <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, he, he's the brain. Julius is the brain. He's a he's a book bookworm. Yeah, there you uh, go. He's the one that loves to study, and uh, you know. And, yeah, um, you know, but I, I, I remember, you know, with my sons, you know, coming to my fights, uh, yeah. I remember JD being the oldest one. Oh, this man. Yeah, I would always bring him into the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, he used to suck his fingers, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I think that uh, uh, they basically, you know, were, you know, into the, the high, I mean, the, the, the limelight of everything, but couldn't really comprehend really what, what's this, what's going on. It, it's, yeah. Is this job? Is this dad's job? What did you yeah, know? Yeah, what's happening? <laughs> and a lot of people coming around, and you right. know, so they realized that there was something uh, about dad that that uh, that caused a lot of people to, you know, uh, greet him to, to, to be happy, and uh, you know, and they realized that uh, it, you know, sport. And as they grow older, they started to play baseball. And yeah, uh, baseball, was baseball was tremendous in uh, in, in Las Vegas. We we stayed there for uh, like four years, four and a half years. I had an injury in my shoulder. I had a guitar, uh, no, I, I think it was a a rotator cuff. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. a rotator cuff. cuff t uh, my rotator tear. cuff tore, and um, we spent. You know, it took me about six months to recover. So I I decided to bring the family up. And they went to school, and we end up staying four and a half years of day. Well, that's a that's a good little bit of a culture shock, isn't it? I mean, you talk about uh, night yeah. and day. Yeah, different. Exactly. And it was way back in, you know, uh, it was coming to the end of my career. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was, you know, it, it, it brought a lot of memories, bring, bring a lot of memories. Sure. You know, and I think uh, it was something that helped my my sons a whole lot to get, uh, you know, when you say culture shock. It, it sort of like give them an, a, a different look at life yeah, yeah. and experience right. of life, you know. And uh, I think right. they, they cope very sure. well with it. Yeah. They cope very well with yeah. that. Yeah. 
well, it's good. You get those learning experiences, see different things, experience different things. Is, right. you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So, Julius so, was very good in baseball. He, he used to pitch for the Dodgers. Oh, oh man. Really? And um, his coach wanted me to, to keep him up there. He yeah, said, yeah. man, he can stay with me. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll keep him there. But, uh, you know, I, I can't stay with my, my sons, my boys. Nah, not my family. <laughs> I was a family man. I'm a family man. Yeah, that's good. So, and, uh, there was no way in the world that uh, I'm going to be separated from them like that. But um, all three of them was doing good in baseball. You know, yeah. JD, John, and Julius. Oh, man, it was just amazing. So what? how did you end up in boxing then, Julius? If you Kind of if baseball was your was your thing yeah, yeah. how'd you end up in like finally i mean i know you grew up around it so it's it's obviously you're more prone to pick it up and take it take it on yourself but how did that kind of materialize yeah so um i, I didn't like the sport because you know watching my dad lose at the end of the career you know I, I i didn't like it so um once we moved back to the to the virgin islands um baseball just wasn't the same and so i i, I kind of just didn't want to do it anymore um, I really was good at school. School was pretty easy for me all the time. So uh, I would just stay home and watch TV. Uh, but my oldest brother and my youngest brother joined the gym first. Um, yeah. And so they started training and, and competing. So they would come home and just start teasing me all the time. <laughs> and I was more of the chubbier kid, you know, so they would come home and call me fat, throw rocks at me and stuff like that. <laughs> Almost every day. Uh, until I finally was like, you know what, I'm going to go join the gym with them just so maybe I do need to lose some weight and work out, you know. Uh, and so I joined the gym. I was, in, I was in junior high school. Yeah, junior high school. And uh, I told my dad, look, I'm going to join the gym, but I don't want to punch nobody. I don't want nobody <laughs> punching me. You know, I, I was used to call him heavyweight. Fitness yeah. only. Yeah. I always used to call him heavyweight, man. Yeah. Yeah. I said, heavyweight, you're going to be the heavyweight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I said, I don't want nobody punching me. And he said, okay, no problem. Yeah. No problem. And so I would train, run with, every, run with everybody, train, do the bag, do the pads, everything. Uh, but then my brother started to compete. And uh, my dad, I, yeah, my oldest brother, he said, you know, uh, the brother needs some sparring. You, you won't mind, you know, sparring with your brother? I was like, ah. And I thought about it. I was like, maybe I could get him back for all those times he came in the house and was teasing me and throwing rocks at me. Right. I said, I can hit him, right? He said, yeah. I said, all right, I'm in. There you go. <laughs> I'm in. And uh, we Sorry. started going at it. Boy, he used to beat me up, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I remember this. I don't know. I remember this that, um, you know, I told um, one of my uh, coaches that was working with me, one of my helpers, I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk him in. I'm going to. I'm gonna throw the line out there, and he is going to—he's going to take the bait, the sinker, yeah. and everything. All I'm gonna do is allow him to spar and get the opportunity to get off some punches. And um, we put him in there, and we put it with somebody that you know he could throw punches with, and sure. throw punches, and he was like, and he loved it. And man, he was caught, man. Ju <laughs> Julius got sinker, hooked, huh? He took the hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it was the end of it, man. He yeah. he just wanted to be in the boxing program. He wanted to box and then started to compete. And uh, 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 I mean, the rest is history. He, uh, yeah. I remember him going to Trinidad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and winning the, um, uh, uh, the Cabo games, Caribbean games. Yeah. The Caribbean yeah. games. yeah. Uh, and, I mean, it was just amazing, you know. How he uh, flourished in the in, in, in the sport, and uh, then uh, started to you know get into international tournaments, doing tremendously, and then was was uh, you know get to go to the Olympics. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, that was good. That happened out of nowhere. <laughs> it just it's just amazing. Uh, the hard work, the determination. I think they started to understand. You know what dad used what to he do. was going through there. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. dad was all about, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, discipline. You know, hard yeah. work. You know, yeah. nothing comes easy, and you got to take a chance. You know, and uh, they decided that if they're going to become anything, they, they realized that they got to get off their behind and you know <laughs> put the work in there. Yeah. Well, I bet it makes you give it. You, Show it, you kind of get a new appreciation for your dad and what he was able to accomplish in the oh, ring and, and in life in general. Once you've been in there and experienced some of the same stuff, big time, big time. Yeah, we we didn't know until like well into high school when we started to compete, and we were like, "Wow, 
Like you have to push yourself. You have to tell your body, you got to keep going. Even your body's like, nah, nah, we're not going no more. You have to say, no, we have to go. That's right. Going. <laughs> right. And he had to do that on a way higher scale. And we were like, man, yeah. there's, yeah. There's, there's, there's something that yeah. always stuck with me in, in the word of God, that uh, as you, as a man think it, so is he. Yep. So if you think that you can't make it, you're not going right. to make your it. Yeah. Like, yes, but if yeah. you think that you can and you, you keep telling yourself, I'm right. going to make this, I'm going to make this, you will make it. Yeah. And I always used to tell him, yep. come on, you got to put your mind in it. You know, think it first. Think that you're going to make it. Believe in yourself. Believe that you're going to make it and you will make it. Well, starting late, you did almost make it. You were 2008 Olympic qualifier, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where was that at? Um, I qualified at the there were there was three and I qualified in the the, the last one at Guatemala. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yep. I got yep. the silver medal there. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. I, I want to come back and talk to you about your pro career a little bit, but I do want to go back and touch on after the after the Norris fight. Three fights later was another memorable fight um, in Spain against Harold Graham. Ooh, yeah, Harold Graham. Again, yeah. another. Another right hand that come out of nowhere, just right. the opposite. He backed you up again into a corner, I think. <laughs> right. And he, right. he was, he was he actually was awkward, getting the man. better. He was, awkward. he was really awkward. Uh, one of the most awkward uh, salpa that I met. met. Yeah. You know, and uh, most salpas salpa always give, you know, the orthodox fighters trouble. But, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I You know, <laughs> in that fight... You know, I just felt that, you know, I was going to knock him out. I just felt that way, irregardless. And, um, you know, uh, I remember in the first round, I got a good punch in my in my eye and it started yeah. to, sw to swell. And the referee, I think, was um, uh, Cortez? Cortez, Mike Cortez. Uh, Joe, Joe. Joe, Joe Cortez. Cortez. Okay. Joe yep. Cortez. Yeah. And Joe came to my corner and said, hey, the eye is looking, uh, you know, I'm, 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 you gotta be careful. You gotta go out there and do something. Once I'm gonna stop the fight. That was that was it. That was after the third round, right? Because yeah, so Graham was kind of giving yeah. you the business. I think and... it was the second round because it was it, it? was it the third round and knocked him out. I think uh, it was the third round. I'm was it the third or fourth? Round. Maybe the fourth. I don't know. I think it was the fourth. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 And um, you know, he came and he gave that statement. So I, I like, I decided that you know what, I'm gonna switch. Yeah. So that you know lit a fire under you. I switched because, uh, you know, you went south park. I went south park just because of my eye. Okay. And um, uh, believe it or not, you know, I said, Lord, uh, I need, I need it now. I need it now. Um, I need the Holy Ghost now. I need the Spirit of God now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people wouldn't believe me, people don't, but that was in my mind, and I asked God to come now. And the next thing you know, uh, I spent out there, I switched, and uh, Howard Graham thought uh, he had me. Yeah. And he came straight at me to finish the, the, the job, you know? And um, I saw the punch, man, and uh, all I had to do was to, you know, uh, let it go. Uh, let it go. And yeah. um, it caught him right on the chin. And he you know, just and, folded. Uh, he just, he just <laughs> literally went limp. Yeah, he just li literally went limp. You well, know, you know, I, they uh, say that they say a hurt fighter is a dangerous fighter, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, yes, a yeah, fighter yeah, gets yeah, a little yeah. little hurt and he's a little buzzed or something, and he right, goes right, on right. autopilot and does what he's done yeah. repetitiously right. day in and day out in the gym, right, right, on, right. Well, automatically. I, I, I don't, I don't think. You see, what happened? He, he came right at me after the uh, the bell ring for the for the for the fourth round, uh -huh. and. Um, uh, I was fresh. I mean, you know, I was coming back, but um, I, I thought that I, I really believed that uh, he wanted to catch me again. He wanted to hurt me again. Uh -huh, yeah. But not realizing that, uh, you know, I still was dangerous. I still, right. you know, uh, he, he probably forgot, you know, about my power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, he probably forgot about the power. But anyhow, you, you reminded you know, him. I was able to. I was able to let that punch go and it just touched him on the chin that was the end of it well i i um, remember the announcer saying uh one of them was like oh no we were afraid that was gonna happen that's what we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what we were worried about
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that great. That that is a classic, though. That is like uh, an all time. Just come from behind. Yeah, yeah. But uh, after that, you know, we always, I, you know, with all my fights, man. After the fight, I always go over and, uh, you know, we have such a tremendous. I, I think there's something about boxers, fighters, you know, that uh, there's, there's a there's a part of us that I, I think you know has has been affected by the the training about uh, uh, the, 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 I think all the, the the stuff that we do in boxing to try to bring us to that place where we, 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 we you know, we submit, we surrender yeah. ourselves to training. So somehow it, 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 it causes us to become very, you know, um, uh, lovable. Uh, you know, if, if I could use that word, um, yeah. friendly, um, you know, um, we just want to hug each other after the fight. Like yeah, respect. yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just, just like a respect and understanding. Uh, we yeah. just want to go there and say, man, thank God for you, man. I really appreciate you. You're a tremendous athlete. And uh, But before, you were ready to eat each other's heads yeah. off. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, you're ready to tear out each other's heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but when, when fight, you go through the trenches yeah, together, go, it doesn't matter what side you're on. Let's yeah. have some tea. Let's have some. <laughs> let's, go, let's go have a party. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing. You know. Uh, yeah. I, I, I remember. That, that's the beauty uh, of, of my sport, sports. though. Yeah. Yeah. Speak, uh, yeah. You know? it's, the, it's the sport. is is a, a tremendous sport. It's done a lot for a lot of fighters. Uh, a lot of guys that would have never made it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if they had stayed. Uh, you know, away from the sport and may have their lives, then I'm talking about me, may, and we may have gone, we would have gone astray. Sure. But boxing brought dignity, it brought uh, self-worth, it, it brought something to our lives yeah. that made us look at life differently. Sure. You know, and um, yeah. that's why I, I, you know, I tip my hat to, to, to all the, the boxing organizations that are out there pushing boxing, because it does a lot for a lot of people out there. It doesn't matter your your, your creed, your color. Uh, boxing changes your life. Yeah. Amazing. And that was <laughs> that fight was for the WBC middleweight title, right? With, with um, the one with uh, Ray, with Graham, yes. With oh, Graham. Graham. Okay. So what was it, what's that like coming back from a fight like that? You arrive in the Virgin Islands. Woo! Is it? It's got to be a, a, unbelievable. Yes, it, the reception it, 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 it and was. just the feeling of pride of what you've accomplished. Oh man, it was it was amazing. Um, you know, um, the people here in the Virgin Islands are so hospitable. The, the, the hospitality is amazing, right? Uh, especially coming from their own, you know, and um, doing something like that to put the Virgin Islands on the map. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the government, um, uh, everybody came out. You know, uh, tourism. And, and uh, being that it's an island and, and tourism is something that we are, you know, we depend on. Sure. You know, and tourism wanted to, you know, show their respect. Yeah. You know, to come out and support because, you know, we, we were sending the Virgin Islands around the world. Yeah. You know, and uh, they decided that, look, we want to back this young man up. He is, um, I mean, an ambassador, you know. And uh, we just want to let him know how much we, we, we love him and how much we care for him. And, uh, I, you know, like I always say the Virgin Islands have always been there for me. Yeah. You know, some people feel that, uh, some people feel that, you know, they could have done more. And uh, I, 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 I would agree too, you know. But you know what? Um, I'm, 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 you know, I'm a type of person that um, is satisfied, you know. Um, uh, if you give me a dollar, I would say thank you. If you give me a million dollars, I would say thank you too. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And hope for the latter. I, I wouldn't do but you know, but uh, I appreciate all that the, um, the, the 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 government of the Virgin Islands, the people yeah. of the Virgin Islands, my you know, my entourage, my family. Uh, you know, I couldn't ask for, for nothing more, nothing better. But yeah. well, it's a beautiful place. Maybe. The people are great. They're so gracious yes. and accommodating yes. and good people. It's amazing. Sure. You know, I, I, I want to make this statement. I I remember um, uh, when I lost the fight against Mike McCollum. Yeah. Um, coming back home was something that was a struggle for me. I didn't want to come back home. 
I felt that I let down the island. I felt that I let down the government. I let down my people, my family, and everybody. And I remember somebody telling me, uh, that was my wife. Back then, uh, it was my girlfriend, but became my wife, said to me that, you know, which was Julia's mother, said to me, you know, there's one person that won't turn their back on you. There's one person that won't let you down. And um, who is that? It says, Jesus Christ. And I said, you know, you're right. That gave me the courage to face, you know, uh, the downfall. That, that gave me the courage to face, uh, you know, all that was going to come against, uh, against me. Sure. You know, um, the negativity, the, 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 you see, I told you, uh, you need to go away. Yeah, you can't make it in the Virgin Islands. You know, and um, that gave me the courage. And uh, I went home and there was a red carpet. Okay, coming out That's of amazing. the, there was a red carpet coming out of the, um, when I reached down the stairs of, uh, I think it was um, American Airlines, and there was a red carpet, and there was a high school, two high school band playing for a loser. I lost, and they were playing for the loser. And uh, I had a paper smile on my face. I didn't want to be a part of this. I couldn't wait to get home. I finally got home. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and, and listen to this. When I won the, 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 the championship in Las Vegas, when I won the junior middleweight championship in Las Vegas, there was no uh, red carpet. There was no high school band. <laughs> there was no, listen, listen to me. Yeah. There was no um, hundreds of people. It was my family. Yeah. At the airport. It was yeah. it was my it was my entourage. It was my, you know, basic uh, you know, yeah. guys at the gym, you know, that that came to the airport when I after I won the junior middleweight championship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It says something. My life was changed then. Yeah. My life was not the same. Okay? When I say that, uh, Christ came into my life. My eyes were open. I was able to, I knew who Julian Jackson was. I know I was able to face Dan King face to face. There was a time uh, when I was talk, when I would talk, talk to Dan King, I would talk with my head down, couldn't look at him in the eye because I didn't know who I was. You know, I was a, a little island boy uh, meeting this multimillionaire uh, a promoter, you know, and uh, when I accepted Christ, I was, look, I looked at Dan King in his eyes and I didn't blink. You understand? He turned his face from me. He turned his head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because I knew who Julian Jackson was. I knew what Julian Jackson's purpose, you know, was all about. And uh, there was nothing that could have stopped me from there. And, uh, you know, I, I thank God because hundreds of people's lives are touched because of what God did in my life. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you were always boxing, a great representative. Boxing, Boxing is a part of it. Boxing, you see, God, God doesn't uh, 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 choose uh, what He's going to use. It's the heart. You know what I'm saying? It's the person. It's the individual. You know, you can be uh, 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 in a sport, and because of your heart, you make it seem as if the sport is evil. But it's not the sport. It's you. Yeah. You know, a lot of people looked at boxing and say, "Oh man, boxing is is is." is evil it's wicked it's not you know it's the person it's the individual you know it's how you carry yourself is 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 you know what you what's in your head what's in your mind you know and um mike tyson cannot be julian jackson and i cannot be mike tyson we are two separate people i remember mike tyson said to me he said hey champ man do you do you go out and knock guys out <laughs> on the streets in the Virgin Islands, I say, "Hey, Mike, man, I'm not you." <laughs> there, there, are no, boy, there are no man. parades for boy, guys you know? that knock people out in the streets. Yeah, Mike <laughs> said, "You know, don't you get fed up with guys and knock guys out?" I said, "Mike, I'm not you, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're too nice a guy. So, it's the so, person, it's the individual." So let's go back then to the, the your first defense after that was Dennis Milton, another stunning knockout in the first round. What do you remember about that fight? What what recollections do you have? Who was that? Milton. Dennis Who? Milton. Dennis, Dennis Milton. Dennis Milton. Wow. Yes. 
the magician. Yes, yes. He was the magician. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, I remember that fight so much. Uh, it, I think it was in, was it in Madison? No, it wasn't in Madison. It was in Jersey. Yeah, I think it was in Jersey. Yeah, it was close to um, New York, but it was in Jersey. And uh, I'll never forget uh, the magician. Um, somebody said, hey, Julian, somebody's going to be working magic on you today. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no way, man. Magic cannot work, you know. With a believer, <laughs> you you with pulled the rabbit out of the hat on that, that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I said magic cannot work with with a believer. And um, uh, Sustin Valley, uh, Willie had passed away. Sustin Valley was my trainer, uh, uh, a very renowned uh, coach as well from the Virgin Islands, born in the Virgin Islands, and um, he was my uh, coach. You know, and uh, Sustin said to me, uh, Julian. You know what? I want you to be very, very careful with this guy, uh, the magician. Okay? He's going to be coming with some tricks, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And I said, well, hey, you know, well, I know that, um, you know, we, a lot of these guys, uh, you know, they're hungry for the, the championship fight as well. They're, they're, they're looking forward to have this break just like I was, you know, and uh, I know I have to fight. I know I have to give my all. And I said, I'm going to give my all, man. And uh, this fight, I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to, I'm going to give it everything I got. And uh, I realized that I had to. And uh, because of that mindset, I, I believe that's that, 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 that's why the, the 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 fight turned out the way it did. You know, it's quick. I, I stopped him in the, I think in the in the, in the and you know, somebody told me that uh, most of my fight is going to end in the third round. Yeah. Um, Somebody told me that um, um, way back, I was just about to turn pro. And uh, somebody that was close to Willie, my trainer, Willie Wilhelm George, who passed away. And they said, you know, uh, Julian, you know, the, the, what, what we are seeing, and we believe that, you know, most of your fights are not going to go three rounds, mm -hmm. or, or, you know. And they said that. I said, man, you prophesying, man. Go ahead. It's all right. <laughs> you could speak it, man. <laughs> and believe it or not, it, most of my fight end in three rounds. Well, you had to have one of the highest knockout percentages. I haven't looked it up, but it's, I know it's yeah, around was, 89, 90%. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, one time it was higher than Mike Tyson. You know, I think it was higher than Mike Tyson. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just amazing. And you know what? Um, I've never really uh, sat down and, 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 you know, thought of a plan of maybe making it to the top of boxing. And, you know, uh, every day all I did was go in there and did what I love to do. Yeah. I love to work. I love to compete. I love to put myself, uh, push myself to the limit. Yeah. And, um, uh, and you know what? It did tremendous for me. It, it I realized that uh, we may not understand this, but you know what you do, what you do for yourself, and the way you do it could pay off for you, can 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 do a lot for you. Uh, there were times I, I wanted to quit, I wanted to go home, I, you know, I didn't want to go to the gym, but I realized that uh, you know what, I'm gonna, you know, persevere. I'm gonna push myself, and uh, something good is going to come out of this, and. Uh, you know, it, it did, and uh, I encourage anyone, any person, any, no matter who you are, you can be maybe up in age. Uh, you're, 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 you're pursuing a career, you're pursuing something. Go after it, man. Give it 100%, and uh, you'll be amazed what comes out of it. Yeah. Something good will come out of it. Well, you're a great example of that. You had a few more fights after that. A um, couple rough ones against Gerald McClellan. You retired in... Um... Let me see, when was it? 1998. 1998, yep. What What was the final kicker? Why'd you go, well, okay, I think this is enough. I need to I need to move on. Yeah, man. Um, you know, um, I remember uh, going in with uh, Gerald McClendon. Wow, what an what a opportunity. What a, and I, I knew I was going to knock him out. <laughs> and, um, you know, he was a big puncher himself. And um, uh, 
I remember my, you know, with my coach, my trainers, and telling me to be very careful. And uh, I remember hurting him, and I remember him actually making a sound like a, a, a like a groan. <clears throat> oh, you know, man. I caught him some body shot. Yeah. Uh, he went back to the corner, and uh, my corner recognized that there was something wrong with his leg. Something was wrong with him. Uh huh. You no, know? and. Um, uh, I was, you know, I, I decided that I'm going to go after him now. I'm going to take him out. And um, I went out there and I dropped my hand and I made yeah. a mistake. And he <laughs> caught me. <laughs> I could laugh, you know. I, could, man, I, I thank God for his grace. But he caught me, you know. And um, wow, uh, we always said that. I said, whoever gets hit first, you know, is, is really... Uh, it's is, is going to be the, the winner, uh, yeah, the yeah. loser, and I got hit yeah. first. Yeah. And I ended up get you know lo losing that fight. And yeah. uh, wow, it, it it was amazing, you know. And uh, I tell you what, after that fight, you know everything was good. Uh, but he ended up having to go to the doctor. He ended up being the one that had to actually go to the doctor after the first fight. Yeah. And uh, there was something happening with him. I don't know. You know, uh, something going on with him. But I thank God that, uh, you know, I'm in my right mind. Uh, I thank God that, uh, you know, I stayed away from drugs. Uh, you know, I tried to live a life pleasing to God. And uh, yeah. it, it worked out for me. You know, yes. uh, I, I, I'm not punch drunk. I'm not, you know, slurring in my, in my, in my language, in my speech. Right. I, I just thank God for allowing me to experience, you know, uh, this, this part of life, you know, not everybody have the opportunity to enjoy, you know, uh, a career in boxing and, and, and going to the, to the, to the top. Uh, you know, I call it, I call it the, the cream or the, the cream of the, the, the crop, uh, right. becoming the, uh, uh, two, two division world champion and then actually yeah. being inducted into the boxing hall of fame. That did happen for 2020, didn't it? While all this was going down. Kind yeah, amazing. Of, that was kind of a bittersweet thing, probably. You're like, yeah, but no official ceremony. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll get things on track and that will happen. Yeah, congratulations on that. Long time coming. It's amazing. Uh, sometimes you don't know, you know, the hard work that you put out. You know, it, it definitely is going to work for you. It definitely yeah. is going to say a lot about you. You know, the hard, sometimes we... We work hard, and some people maybe sometimes get discouraged because, man, I'm, I'm working too hard, and nobody, you know, there's nobody that really uh, uh, cares uh, uh, about how hard I work. But you just keep pushing it, man. You just keep uh, uh, giving your best, and I guarantee you, you know, God sees it, and He is going to reward you. Yeah, that's for sure. So ten years later, Julius, you find yourself in the Olympic qualifiers and turned pro yeah. a year after that, right? Yep, yep. 2009, yeah. 2009. Where and where was that at? Uh, here. Yeah, he right uh, there. Yeah. He, um, my dad, he didn't get to do his pro debut at home. And so he decided, you know what? You guys should do it. Yeah. <laughs> and so we made history again. <laughs> right? The first uh, pro Another fighter era. Was, uh, Another era. to turn professional yeah. here at home so that was a big that was a big feat it's amazing you know what what was interesting as well um you know i did not make it to the olympics in my uh, amateur career um at that time um president caught no no president i forget who boycotted the uh olympics back then it's russia right yeah there was there was uh some 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 problems with russia and um, Jimmy Carter, I think it was, Jimmy Carter. was it Jimmy Carter? I'm not too sure. Probably Jimmy Carter. I, I think you're right. I, I, I didn't was. have the opportunity to go to the Olympics. And uh, man, that's when my, 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 my coach told me that, you know what, I'm going to turn you pro. But, um, you know, I got the opportunity now, you know, to go to the Olympics yeah. with yeah. my son. Yeah. It's there amazing. You know. Yeah. You know, and, and here it is. Um, it was actually four of my sons, no, three of my sons. Yes, four of us was able to go to the Olympics. Right. Yeah, you know, what three I'm saying? as athletes. Three as athletes, and uh, I as the coach. Yeah, that's that's amazing. 
Yeah, and, 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 and as a matter of fact, five of my, my family went to the Olympics. And all of them have to do with boxing. Two coaches and three boxers. Yeah. That's amazing to me. That's, yeah, that's, that's think, history. I think we're the only household of fighters that have a world champ and three Olympians under the same roof. Right, right. Oh, really? Yeah. Only household. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's pretty wild. What a great <laughs> achievement. So, Julius, wow, yeah. Julius, you had some good success in your career. 20, yes, yes. 20 wins, two losses. But again, I, th I think I saw some flashes of that punching power that your dad had. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some flashes of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. some good fights. Yeah. We're, still, we're still going, you know, it's still going. So, yeah, it's it's. it's we still exciting. will be competing too, man. Yeah, yeah. It's still so, have you hung up the gloves get... for oven mitts or no? Not, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've, I've done both my whole life. You know, I, they call me the chef because I really am. Uh, same year I went to Olympics was the same year I I, I went to college. school. Right. I graduated college school in two thousand eight. Um, and so I've been doing both my whole life. Uh, my biggest fighting career, when I was fighting for uh, the number one spot uh, for the IBF, uh, I was number five in the world. Um, that same year, I ended up on the Food Network as a guest chef. Yeah. So uh, I, I've done both my whole life, and my dad supported both the whole time. Right? It's, he, it's, like, it's an interesting, well, yeah, who wouldn't like having a chef in the family? It's an interesting mix. How'd you get into the culinary side of it? Where, where, where'd that interest come from? And do you, do you specialize, I suppose, I assume you specialize in like Caribbean style food. Yeah, we, we here in the Caribbean, we love to eat, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all love to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I, it, it mostly was uh, providing something and then also giving, well, mostly because I did it for my siblings first. Um, yeah. I made some fried chicken and they, we were hungry, you know, uh, my dad was out and my mom was off working too and we were hungry. So I was like, I'm gonna make it. I'm, I've seen my mom do this a million times. I can make it. I made it. And, and while I was doing it for myself, my brothers and sisters were like, yo, make us some too. So I like, right. <laughs> <laughs> made some for them for too. The and I, I sat there and watched them eat it. You know, they were eating it pretty fast because they were hungry, but then they also enjoyed it at the same time. And I fell in love with that feeling. I was yeah. like, wow, I could provide something, but also make something that was enjoyable that they yeah. enjoyed. And to this day, I, I watch people eat. You know, I, was, <laughs> I go to my clients and I look out and see, you know, if they're enjoying the food. Yeah. Uh, so it's, just, so it's like you're, it's a little odd. You're either punching people in the face and making them happy or feeding their belly, <laughs> putting food in their bellies and see right. that joy that's, dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great balance though keeps you keeps yeah, you, keeps yeah. you grounded <laughs> so so do you have a favorite chef i i watch some of those cooking shows i have got it during this whole covid shutdown thing i started cooking a little bit more i'm i'm not a chef by any stretch but i can at least do more than boil an egg you know so do you have any favorites out there <laughs> Um, uh, you know, just some of the popular ones. I also, I have, I don't know if you heard of Seth, Sam Choi. He's out of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He's one of my yeah. favorite chefs. Yeah. Um, uh, Sunny Anderson. She's she's a good chef too. Uh, Katie Lee. Katie yeah. Lee from the Kitchen. She's awesome. Yeah. Um, and of course Ramsey Man. Ramsey yeah. is a character. Man. I love. Him. He is. I watch all <laughs> his stuff. He's just funny. Yeah, I love him. You see, it's about his, his cooking though. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I can't He's respect serious, that. Ready well, to forget somebody. Ooh, me. <laughs> cooks too, he does, well, he does. The good thing is you can never blame your, cook, your, your nutrition or diet man. being bad for boxing. Do you know? <laughs> I wrote a cookbook and I, I took I, I took his uh his his pea soup recipe and it's in, in my cookbook. So yeah, I, I gave him, I gave him some credit. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah. you, Julian, you've done some amazing things for the sport. I grew up watching you and was always a huge fan. I started boxing when I was 15, and that was right in the 80s. So wow. I was right in your heyday, and you were definitely somebody I looked to is go, how can I do that? How can I get yeah. that kind of kind of authority? So right, right. appreciate you for that. Again, you've done Thank some you, amazing things for the sport and great contributions. Julius, um, before we wrap here, let everybody know you talked about a cookbook. Where can they get that? Is it still available? Um, how can we follow what you're doing um, on your social channels and all that? Yeah, of course, man. Um, you can find the cookbook. It's called My Modern Creepy Kitchen. 
Uh, it's on Amazon. It's in Barnes and Noble. You can see find any Barnes and Noble across the country and just ask for My Modern Cuban Kitchen by Julius Jackson. Um, and you know, and I'm on everything. You know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, just uh, Julius the Chef, or just put Julius Jackson, and you know, you'll find me. Um, and my website is juliusthechef.com, and you can get more information there. So, fantastic. Well, I'm going to go buy that, and I'm going to I'm going to cook something. I'm going to post yeah, it. Man. I'm going to tag you on it, so be ready. Get, get some pizza, bro. <laughs> awesome. Well, hope we can see you guys at the tournaments. Um, maybe we'll join yes, a hook up at the International Boxing Hall of Fame whenever that official ceremony comes about. And right. yes, look yes. forward to seeing you guys again out and about. All right, man. Same, Thank you same. guys again. The privilege, man. It was an honor, man. Thank you. Same. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. Peace. Thank you for watching this episode of Title Unboxed. If you're anything like me, you can never get too much boxing. So if you'd like to watch more episodes, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our Title Boxing YouTube page.